The Acer Predator Triton 700 is a thin and powerful gaming laptop, a combination that usually results in high temperatures and lost performance. In this video, I'll perform some in-depth thermal testing and show you how well it performs, see if there are any issues, and show you what can be done to improve things. In my configuration here, I've got the Intel i7-7700HQ CPU with NVIDIA 1080 Max-Q graphics, so fairly decent specs. Although a last 7th generation quad-core CPU, as opposed to the newer 8th gen options. Thermal testing was completed with an ambient room temperature of 19 degrees Celsius, so expect warmer temperatures in a warmer environment. Starting towards the bottom of the graph, in light blue, at idle, the CPU was actually quite warm. Probably as the fan was running quietly, as you'll hear later. Moving up to gaming in the green bar, the temperatures were still acceptable. And this was after temperatures stabilised from an hour of playing. After manually maxing out the fans in yellow, the CPU and GPU temperatures both dropped back a bit. With the CPU undervolted by minus 0.150 volts, but fans back on default, the CPU temperature was a little cooler than by just maxing out the fans, shown in orange. With the CPU undervolt and max fans combined, we get the best temperatures yet, shown in red. The stress tests were done by running ADA64 and the Heaven benchmark at the same time, in order to attempt to fully utilise both the processor and graphics. Moving up in the graph and starting with the dark red bar, the CPU peaked at 87 degrees Celsius. Honestly, not too bad for extended load, especially considering how thin the laptop is. By maxing out the fan and applying the undervolting, shown in the pink, purple, and dark blue bars, the temperatures get significantly better. These are the average clock speeds for the same temperature tests just shown. Not really much to show here, as there was no thermal or power limit throttling, the 7700HQ was able to boost to its 3.4GHz all-core turbo speed without any problems, even in these stress tests. These are the clock speeds I got while just running CPU-only stress tests without any GPU load. Again, no difference from before, absolutely no throttling at all on the CPU under any of my testing. Refreshing to see from the 8750H laptops I've tested recently. I've got some Cinebench CPU benchmarks here. I was getting the same results with or without the CPU undervolt applied. As shown earlier, there was no throttling at all here, so no problems getting the full performance with the out-of-the-box configuration. Just for reference or comparison, I've also noted the score of the newer i5-8300H the quad-core laptop CPU from the 8th generation. Although the performance doesn't change, the undervolt can still be used to drop the temperatures, as shown previously. Here are the GPU-only clock speeds while under a graphical-only stress test. Acer's Predator Sense software lets you apply GPU overclocks easily in two different levels, known as faster and turbo. The faster profile overclocks the GPU core by 75MHz and the memory by 200MHz while the turbo profile doubles this to 150MHz on the core and 400MHz on the memory. I was able to get a little further improvement by manually overclocking it with MSI Afterburner, up to 200MHz on the core and 800MHz on the memory, as shown in red. But this may vary between laptops, as it depends on the particular chip. So how does this performance boost actually translate in games? In the games tested, the exact same Windows updates, game updates, and Nvidia drivers were installed, so there shouldn't be any other changes. Undervolting won't help improve performance here, as we're not seeing any throttling, but it will lower the temperatures. So basically, we're going to see best case performance here with my manual GPU overclocks, which again were a 200MHz boost to the core and 800MHz extra on the memory. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the built-in benchmark, and at the highest settings, the overclocks were just getting us a small 6% performance improvement to the average frame rates. Fortnite was tested using the replay feature, and in this test, the overclocked results are slightly better, 8.5% faster than running at stock speeds when running maxed out at epic settings. So there was just a little improvement with the GPU overclock applied, but it will vary between game and settings. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle the body was sitting in the low 30s, quite cool. While gaming, we can see that only the rear of the laptop warms up to around 50 degrees Celsius, as that's where the CPU and GPU are located. The keyboard area stays pretty cool though. Fairly similar results with the stress tests running, then with the fans manually maxed out and CPU undervolted, the external temperatures lower by a few degrees. As for the fan noise produced by the laptop, I'll let you have a listen to some of these tests.
At idle, it was fairly quiet, and while gaming, it was about as loud as any other gaming laptop I've tested. Under stress test, this rose a little, and with the fans manually maxed out, it gets quite loud. You've got the option of controlling the fan speeds of the CPU or graphics independently through Ace's Predator Sense software, so that should help in finding a good balance between temperatures and fan noise. Overall, the temperatures and performance were pretty impressive when you consider the thin body of the laptop. I expected it to run hotter with the 1080 Max-Q graphics, but for the most part, the 7th gen CPUs seem to run cooler than the newer and faster 8th gen options. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules. There are different factors which will vary results, primarily the temperature you're running in, application of thermal paste, and even the specific hardware, which comes down to the silicon lottery. You may not be able to undervolt or overclock your hardware the same as me. It depends on the chip and its specific power requirements, so don't just blindly copy my settings and do some testing to find out where your stable point is for best results. While you could probably improve the temperatures by swapping out the thermal paste, that's not something I can test in a review unit. If I go ahead and remove the stock thermal paste and replace my own, I can't put the old paste back. So the next reviewer would experience something different from what you'd actually see with the product and unknowingly report incorrect information due to what I've done. In any case though, I'm perfectly happy with the temperatures I measured, especially once undervolted and with the fans boosted, so this may not be required unless you're in a very warm environment. Undervolting on the other hand isn't physically intrusive, and although it wasn't needed to improve the performance as there was no throttling at all here, as we've seen it did improve the temperatures, with no downside once you've got a stable undervolt. It's a nice way to drop temperatures further without raising fan noise. Let me know how much of a performance boost you've found by undervolting your hardware, and what you thought of the improvements here. And don't forget to subscribe for the full review of the Acer Predator Triton 700 gaming laptop, as well as future tech videos like this one.